Hi, in this video we're looking at the determination of entropy changes and how we can work them out by experiment. Okay? Most of it revolves around this equation here, Q equals MC delta T. M is the mass of the surroundings, C is the heat capacity of the surroundings, and T is the temperature change. So by using this equation we can work out how the, um, the, the heat of the surroundings has changed, the heat energy of the surroundings has changed. And if we know how it's changed for the surroundings, then the opposite must have happened for the system. Okay, so we take this equation Q, mc delta t, and we want to turn it to enthalpy change. Enthalpy change is looking at the system. So that's why we put a minus in front of it, because it would be the opposite of what happened in the surroundings. Q, we worked up out here, we divide by a thousand, because delta h, enthalpy changes are normally given in kilojoules per mole. So divide Q by a thousand, because Q in this equation when you calculate it, you get the answer in joules. Notice the mass of surroundings in chemistry we use in grams. Sometimes in other subjects you might use kilograms, in chemistry it's grams. So that's why the answer comes out in joules. So to put into kilojoules, we divide it by a thousand. And delta H is always measured in kilojoules per mole. So we need to divide by the number of moles that have reacted. Now it's important that you use the limiting reagent moles in this equation. Because if it's an excess, an excess reagent, there's some of it left over and all the moles have reacted. So we're going to use the limiting reagent moles. So those two equations to give then, we can work out the enthalpy change of reaction. So let's have a look at an example. Okay, so in this example we're mixing HCl with sodium hydroxide. We've got 50 centimetres cubed of the HCl and it's one mole per dm cubed is its concentration. And we've also got 50 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydroxide and it's 0.5 moles per dm cubed concentration. When we mix those two together, the temperature increased from 20 to 45 degrees centigrade. So we want to calculate the energy change for this reaction. So that's the balanced equation there. Do a balanced equation first, make sure you balance it. It's all one to one here, so it's quite simple in this case. So we're going to use this first then, Q equals MC delta T. So C is the specific heat capacity. For, so for this one, we're using two solutions. Both are solutions that are predominantly water, and the heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Okay, So that's a constant, and that's the one that you pretty much always use. M is the mass of the solution, because that's what the surroundings are. The reaction is taking place in the solution. So the solution is the surroundings. So the density of water is 1 gram per centimetre cubed, so we're kind of making the presumption that the density of our solution is that as well. So we have two lots of 50 mixed together, 50 centimetres cubed, 50, so all together that would be 100 grams, because each centimetre cubed would weigh a gram. Okay, it's got 100 grams. Delta T is a change in temperature, so it ended up at 45, began at 20, so there's a change in 25. So we put that into the equation then, Q equals 100, which is the M, times 4.18, the, the C, times by the delta T, 25, which gives us 10,450 joules. So that answer will always come out in joules. So we look at the, we now want to work out delta H, we'll look back and see which was the limiting reagent. Well, we had equal volumes, but half the concentration of sodium hydroxide. And they react one to one. So the sodium hydroxide was a limiting reagent. The number of moles we had, we're working that out by doing uh, the volume over a thousand times by the concentration. That gives us 0 0.0. 25 moles. Okay, so we do our value, so we put the minus sign, then the value we got for Q, divide by a thousand because we want to put it into kilojoules, and divide by the number of moles, the limiting reagent, and that gives us our value there, minus 418 kilojoules per mole. 